Have you ever looked at the sky and thought, why do stars twinkle? Or wondered if there are people living on other planets? And have you ever wondered what it would be like to travel into space? Find out all the answers plus more to these burning questions about space on why, what, where. Can we travel to space? Imagine if you were taken on a holiday to the moon or to visit Mars one weekend. Sounds awesome, huh? Well, guess what? One day you could get to travel to space and be a space tourist. Space tourism does exist, however, it's very expensive. From the mind-boggling thrill of looking at Earth from space to the feeling of weightlessness, space trips offer the experience of a lifetime to well-funded travellers. Through Space Adventures Limited and the Russian Soyuz program, American Dennis Tito became the first fee-paying tourist in space. South African Mark Shuttleworth and American entrepreneur scientist Gregory Olson soon followed him. One does not have to be uh, superhuman uh, to adapt to space and it's very doable. Private companies in Russia, Europe and the United States all want to be future leaders of space tourism. Even though analysts see space tourism travel becoming more and more popular, development is a slow process. One day there could even be floating space hotels. But until space travel is more affordable, there won't be enough guests to visit. I think it will still be a long time before orbital spaceflight is accessible to anybody. Uh, but certainly we're moving from having a few people flying to tens of people and then hundreds of people and thousands of people, you know, over the next 10 or 15 years. What do you think it would be like to travel to space? Dr. Nicholas Patrick is only the fourth British-born astronaut to travel in space. He was on the American Space Agency's NASA Space Shuttle Discovery in 1985 and he believes space travel is an amazing and unique experience that will benefit humans in the future. The experience of spaceflight, which is uh, un uh, uh, very hard to describe, the views are staggering. You see a sunset and a sunrise every 90 minutes. You see a, a world without borders and you see how thin and beautiful the atmosphere is. But can you prepare space tourists for what it feels like in space? No, because uh, it is so different than life on Earth. It's like life on another planet and uh, like being a different species almost. How many planets are there and can they support other life? In school, you've probably learned there are eight planets in our solar system. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Pluto used to be the ninth planet until a few years ago, but it's been decided by astronomers that it's actually a dwarf planet. So in total, there are eight planets in our solar system and three dwarf planets, including Pluto. But did you know that there are many more planets than this outside our solar system? In the last decade, astronomers have detected more than 160 planets orbiting stars. Most of these planets are too hot, too cold or too dry to support life. Astronomers have been discovering so-called extrasolar planets for the last 10 years. They look for a characteristic wobble in stars caused by the unseen planets that orbit around them. This technique has been successful in finding Jupiter-type planets, but few have been found with an Earth-like mass that could support human life. However, this new technique may mean we can start to detect more planets like our own. In fact, scientists have recently discovered a cold planet, much like ours, close to the centre of the Milky Way. Many scientists believe the chances are very good that creatures with brains live in other parts of the universe. 
For example, the materials that we're made of seem to exist in other parts of space. Many stars in the universe resemble our Sun, so there must be millions of planets very much like the Earth that we haven't discovered yet. If that is the case, then creatures could grow and develop in another world, just like in ours. What do you think these creatures would look like? What colour would they be? How many eyes would they have? It's possible that there are creatures that can live and grow and have different ideas, just like humans. They just don't eat the same food we do or breathe the same kind of air. So much is yet to be discovered, but scientists and researchers have dedicated fields of study so they can keep finding out more. What are other creatures from outer space called? Aliens. Why do astronauts float in space? Astronauts float in space because there's no gravity in space. Gravity is a force that we experience every day on Earth. It's what keeps our feet on the ground and stops our toys, books and friends floating off into the air. Gravity is not just the attraction between objects and the Earth. It's an attraction that exists between all objects everywhere in the universe. Sir Isaac Newton, born in 1642, discovered that a force is required to change the speed or direction of movement of an object. He also figured out that the force called gravity made an apple fall from a tree and allowed humans and animals to live on the surface of our spinning planet without being flung off. He worked out that gravity forces are what keep us on the ground. As there's no gravity in space, astronauts naturally float. Floating in zero gravity looks like fun, but it affects the human body in many different ways. One problem is space sickness, the nausea and disorientation felt by some astronauts as they adapt to weightlessness. At first, an astronaut's eyes, inner ear and brain struggle to determine which way is up and which way is down. Most astronauts get over space sickness and learn to live without a fixed up or down. Did you know that on July 20, 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first person ever to walk on the moon? Why do stars twinkle? Every night, stars glitter from the sky like millions of sparkling jewels. But have you ever noticed the starlight dim for a moment, then turn bright again? These quick changes are called twinkles. Even on the clearest night, wisps of floating clouds and specks of dust pass between us and the stars, making the light change and move in different directions. Light also bends and shimmers when it travels through different layers of cold and warm air. And inside our eyes, pinpoints of starlight may flicker on and off when they're not quite bright enough for us to see them steadily. You might have looked up at the sky one night and struggled to see stars. Sometimes pollution in the air that comes from cars, trucks and factories gets in the way of starlight, so we can't see the beautiful stars. In big cities, where lots of lights are left on at night, light from stars is also more difficult to see. What this means is that basically we're blotting out the stars because we're using light carelessly. We're squirting light up into the light sky and it matters if we care about seeing the stars at night. And uh, I think this is something that does matter. Next time you're in the countryside, look up at the stars at night time and enjoy the twinkling light show. What is the famous children's song about stars? That's right, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Coming up, we find out how much junk there is in space, why you can't look at the sun when there's an eclipse, and what is a black hole.
What is space junk? Space junk, otherwise known as space debris or space waste, refers to objects in orbit around the Earth that no longer serve any useful purpose, just like the garbage that gets collected every week from your house. Space junk is everything from satellite fragments that have fallen off after an explosion to dust and paint flakes. Space junk has been a growing concern over the past few years because it can collide with satellites and disable them. Some of the debris is very large, such as burnt out rocket stages and dead spacecraft. However, most of it is much smaller. It's a threat because space junk travels really fast, acting like bullets. Even very small pieces, the size of a book, can cause lots of damage. The European Space Operations Centre watches the space junk very closely through a long telescope and by using a radar system. They can let spacecrafts know to move to a safer orbit and give early warning of large objects that are about to re-enter the atmosphere. What is a black hole? Black holes behave just like the vacuum cleaner that you might have used to clean up your room. Whilst vacuums suck up dirt and crumbs from the floor, black holes clean up the space junk left behind in outer space. Vacuums have a suction power that sucks up mess, but black holes use the power of gravity to pull things towards it. These amazing images taken by American space agency NASA show different jets of high energy particles extending to the outer reaches of the galaxy, Centaurus A. Several other smaller black holes in other star systems with two parts are also visible. The Chandra X-ray Observatory took the images over seven days of continuous observation. Chandra's been operating in space since 1999, detecting and X-raying sources within our solar system and billions of light years away. Black holes may look and sound scary, but they really aren't. In fact, they perform a vital function in maintaining balance amongst the galaxies. Black holes keep temperatures up and help slow the growth of galaxies. Because black holes are objects of infinite mass, they were once thought to devour everything around them, even light. But that's not the case. They actually create energy too. This team is the first to measure the amount of energy being created by a black hole and it turned out to be far greater than anyone thought possible. In this computer image, X marks the spot of the black hole, which is surrounded by a halo or bubble of energy and matter. British and Dutch astronomers created this animation of the jet-powered bubble and calculated its energy at more than 100,000 times the energy of our Sun. What this team of space pioneers has shown is that rather than being harmful voids in the universe, black holes with their strange jet-powered bursts of energy in the depths of space may actually play a key role in the birth of new stars. What is an eclipse? Sometimes during their orbits, the Moon and the Earth form a line with the Sun. When this happens, an eclipse occurs. There are two kinds of eclipse. Lunar, which refers to the Moon, and solar, which means Sun. A lunar eclipse happens when the Earth moves between the Sun and the Moon, blocking part of the Sun's light from reaching the Moon. During a lunar eclipse, you'll see the Earth's shadow on the Moon. In a solar eclipse, the Moon moves between the Earth and the Sun. When this happens, part of the Sun's light is blocked. 
The sun slowly gets dark as the moon moves in front of the sun. When the moon and sun are in a perfect line, it's called a total eclipse. These are very rare. Most people only see one in their lifetime. During this solar eclipse, astronomers watched the event through telescopes and tourists from all over the world peered through protective sunglasses and binoculars. As the moon passed in front of the sun, it was briefly transformed into a crescent. The temperature dropped as people rushed to get the best view of the eclipse. This eager student was keen to find out more about eclipses. I just saw that uh, the moon covered the sun and I saw the solar eclipse. It was really nice. It's important to wear protective glasses when looking at a solar eclipse because even though it might be dark, there's still invisible UV light that can cause permanent damage to our eyes. How long does a solar eclipse last for? Several minutes. What are galaxies made of? Galaxies are made up of a collection of gas, dust and stars and most of them contain billions of stars. Our galaxy is made up of more than 100 billion stars. The Sun is just one of them. Scientists believe that there are billions of other galaxies in the universe. The Milky Way galaxy is a giant star city. Can you see the Milky Way when you look up at night? Galaxies come in three primary shapes. Spiral galaxies are thin disks with spiral arms surrounding a central hub. Elliptical galaxies are uniform, oval-shaped clusters. And irregular galaxies have little or no definite structure. Our galaxy looks like a pinwheel. It's a spiral galaxy. There are spiral arms and a bright central part. The Sun revolves around the centre of the galaxy and it takes the Earth with it. What is a light year? It is the distance that light travels in one year. Coming up, we discover what happens when stars explode, what a satellite is and what astronauts wear in space. What is a supernova? Have you heard of a supernova? It sounds exciting, and it is. A supernova is an explosion of stars, which results in the creation of a new star. Supernova involve removing a star's outer layers, filling the surrounding space with hydrogen and helium, along with other elements. The debris eventually forms clouds of dust and gas. Here, the brightest stellar explosion ever recorded has amazed scientists. They've discovered a massive supernova. There are something like 400 billion stars. And the stars that are massive enough to do something like this, there are maybe a handful of them. Most supernovas happen when stars with 8 to 20 times the mass of our sun collapse under their own gravity. What is a satellite? A satellite is any object that orbits another object. The Earth's moon is a satellite and the Earth itself is a satellite of the Sun. Artificial satellites are machines that we place in orbit around the Earth, the Sun or another world. The first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, was sent into space to orbit Earth on the 4th of October 1957 by the former Soviet Union. A recent exhibition at London's Science Museum investigated the benefits space brings to our everyday lives and satellite technology is seen as playing a crucial role in how we live today. It's had a big impact on our world because the technology in space 
feeds back vital information to Earth. These are the spacecraft orbiting Earth. They're not going any further into space. And they are telling us our, our weather forecasts. Increasingly, they are very important for studying climate change. They provide eyes in the sky. Every satellite launched into space comprises a payload and a bus. The payload is all the equipment a satellite needs to do its job, the tools for the task. These can include antennas, cameras, radar and electronics. Each satellite will carry its own unique set of instruments or technology relevant to the mission. The payload for a communication satellite would include large radio antennas to receive and transmit television or telephone signals to Earth. A disaster monitoring satellite might contain cameras to take photographs of the land below. Most satellites are sent into orbit either on rockets or launch vehicles, which fall into the ocean once they've used up all their fuel. Two factors combine to keep a satellite in orbit. The speed of the satellite and the gravitational pull between the Earth and the satellite. What are three things satellites are used for? Communication, Earth observation, navigation. Why do astronauts wear spacesuits? Did you know that astronauts get to choose what they wear in space? Inside the space station they wear what you and I wear. T-shirts, sweaters, shorts, pants and socks. However, when they're working outside in space, they wear spacesuits. Spacesuits protect astronauts from micrometeorites that may hit them when they're spacewalking. The suits protect the astronauts from the constant changing temperatures and also protects them from solar and infrared radiation and the lack of oxygen in space. Here, Japanese designers have created fashion spacesuits for space tourists. The suits look pretty, but may not be that practicable inside a tiny spaceship. Did you know that an astronaut can work in space for up to seven hours? Exploring space helps us learn about the amazing quest for life that begins on Earth and extends into the galaxies beyond.